the world is pretty much turning upside down right now on its way to right side up. And in the process, those of us with access to insight and realization and prophecy are having an easier time than those of us who are locked into an understanding of ourselves that's just third dimensional and material and body. So how do we get to the place where we can actually live with grace through all of these massive changes. Our guest today is Tom Evans, and you might remember he was on Soul Nectar Show years ago, and he's here to paint for us a picture of the path to overstanding. Join us to find out more. Soul Nectar Show, the Soul Nectar Show. You're invited, delighted to discover who you are. Anything is possible if you believe. So join us on this beautiful journey. So let the show. So let the show. Before we start this episode, I, Carrie Hummingbird, and I, Akeem Sami, want you to know that. You are invited. You're invited to to join join Soul Nectar Nectar Tribe. Tribe. If you like what you hear on Soul Nectar Show, you will love being in person with us in Soul Nectar Tribe. We invite you to check it out. First 30 days is free. Right now, go to carriehummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com, forward slash membership, and sign up. We'll We'll see see you you at our our next next tribe gathering. gathering. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of connection to that which is bigger than us, the great mystery beyond the veil, to those synchronistic moments that lead us inexorably to a deeper understanding of who we are and why we're here and what this whole thing called life is about on the planet. And right about now, it's kind of gray gray everywhere and people are going through lots of massive deconstruction and not really understanding why or what's happening and some of us in the know are having an easier time because we've already been told about this years ago through prophecy and such and so we kind of were prepared for these moments of chaos and there's a lot of people on the planet that are really kind of not prepared for this and so what is our goal as the second wave our goal is to help people assimilate these changes as easily as possible you know for the ascension of humanity because that's that's the current moment we're in that moment of a new species being born called Homo Luminous. So welcome to Homo Luminous. Here we are on the planet and boy, it's a hot mess getting there. And we just have to stay the course. Hopefully today with today's guest, you're going to get some really good insights. Uh, He's been on the show before. And of course, you guys know who I am. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, here every single week with you. I love these kind of explorations. This is my jam all here for the awakening and uh, loving to bring those ancient wisdoms out into the surface where people might actually be able to receive them in a cleaner way now than maybe before they were abused and and, uh, used for kind of maybe not the right purpose. (laughs) Now let's just cross our fingers that this time it's going to work. So our guest today is Tom Evans. Uh, You might remember him. He was on the Soul Nectar show years ago, and you knew him then as an author of many books and as a meditation guide on Insight Timer, and even back then we had some wild discussions um, on his show and on my show, and very potent. Welcome to the show, Tom. Oh, it's great to be back. Seems like time has just uh, flown by. Just like last week. Yeah. <laughs> time masters, so to speak, <laughs> which is another subject. Anyway, so in the meantime, Tom became a composer of ambient music, a novelist of futuristic prophecy that could be interpreted as just fiction, or as the rest of us know, it's actually prophecy. <laughs> And is now putting it all together in a magnum opus, which includes all of his decades of research into metaphysical topics. And if you checked him out on Inside Timer or his podcast, you you know this dude. He's 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 in some deep stuff. So this new book is called The Book of Overstanding, and it's in progress as we speak. And we're looking forward to seeing and reading it and receiving his messages. But we get a little sneak because we get to have a little sneak conversation with you today, Tom. So I'm excited to. Uh, 
to see what's been brewing in your world since we last spoke, which was before the pandemic. So very exciting to see you now. Great to be here as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to the book coming in as well, because it is literally coming in as I'm writing it. I'm serializing it over 23 months and uh, new revelations come in every month. Uh, and it's almost like it's being read to me. You know, I'm, being, I'm, being, uh, I'm just taking dictation. Oh, I know what that feels like, because that's yeah. what happened for the second wave book. For those, those of you guys who have seen this one, remember the rainbow eye? Uh -huh. This one was a dictation too. Isn't it interesting when it comes, for me, it comes in like a blob. I don't know how it comes for you, but it's like, like in computer language, like a blob of data comes in the right side of my head, like kind of hovers here, and then it starts to parse and assimilate into words. And then I get the words in my mind, and then I just type them. And then, because I was so anal retentive, I took my pendulum and was like, did I get it right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, like, did I understand you correctly? Because it is, it's kind of like not really coming from this level of existence. It's coming from a much higher plane of existence and knowing, right? That's right. And that's pretty much what I want to write about is these mechanisms, how you can actually get into it. So the book's going to be much more than just theory. It's got a set of meditations that go with it. Uh, uh, I've, I've got these things called overtasks. So you, you read a little bit of theory, listen to a bit of theory, and then you do an overtask to actually tune in to the sources. So I'm not just writing about it theoretically. You actually get to experience these altered states of consciousness, which is just great. It's important to experience it, isn't it? And I think this is why shamanic or indigenous practices are really being encouraged at this time. Um, because this, when we experience something, we know it, which is very different than thinking about it and conceptualizing it, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and some of this stuff is is previously unknown to me. I've not read it anywhere. What I do intentionally when I'm doing this sort of work is not study and read anyone else's work. I don't want to plagiarize. I want it to come in just from source uh, as as it is. And only that way do I get this new information, which uh, is certainly new to me, whether it's new to the planet or not, I'm not sure. But certainly it's new to me. And But I, I like to think that the way I can explain it, because I love explaining complex things in an easy way, makes it accessible. And that's it to me, is that this metaphysical uh, research I've been doing, so much of it, as you know, is is really hard to get into. It's been controlled largely by men. Uh, some some of it has been made quite arcane, so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Some of it has been used for the wrong purposes and and that sort of stuff. So it's quite hard to get into all of this um, this language and theory. So what I do is like to almost translate it, and and I see myself as a baton carrier, translate it into a contemporary language uh, with without long words without any sort of strange arcane ritual uh or what have you and also then so well okay now you've got this this new skill how do you use it in 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 this modern day you know all the stuff i've been doing about changing the speed of time and getting into light bulb moments on demand and what have you and and that was all almost like the stuff i was doing when i met you last that was always like my precursor and my 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 training if you know what i mean for the stuff that's now coming through Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, as you're speaking, I, I, I'm realizing that there's many of us hearing these messages, those who are designed this way, I guess, to initiate this process and that are here to translate it and make it accessible to everyone. Because the message that I keep getting is that, you know, this time on the planet, these um, capabilities are open to every single human being, not just specific human beings as in the past. And so some of us that are maybe uh, came here, as I call the second wave, came here to be these guides and emissaries because we do have a very clear channel and an ability to translate information into, like to make bridges with our words, to make bridges so that people can receive from wherever they're at in their consciousness level to receive these tools and start to use them with integrity right because isn't that really like the new game like it's like yes some people have had access to these teachings but now it's time for everybody to get equal access and then to learn how to use them with personal integrity and you know some respect with relationships it is indeed and, and, and one of the the, the shifts that's, that's happening that you you, you describe in, in your work um, it's very akin to millions of years ago when we first got the word. But at that time, humans weren't in the loop designing their future and designing their evolution. Now, what's exciting is we can actually experiment and design what we evolve into. You know, you call it, is it Homo Luminatus? Homo Luminous. 
luminous i think it's great and and uh and, and but but what it doesn't matter what it is it's but it's a, it's a new way of being a new way of, of thinking a new way of, of of doing which is just great and um and it and you know we've had a hundred years of amazing change and we've still got some wars that are trickling in we've still got we're still getting over a pandemic we've got we're still learning how to live on a planet in in harmony and to stop being planetary abusers and to become planetary caretakers and guardians and so you can imagine in a hundred years time this what we're doing right now is building the putting the building blocks in place for that transition to happen you know and, and you know we not we might not be here but children and grandchildren will be there and, and it's our it's incumbent on us to leave the best legacy behind that we can do and, and hold the hands of those that we can do and bring everyone up i think i call it pulling yourself up by your bootstraps Yes, and exactly, because um, we're coming out of the idea, right, that there's a, a rescuer that's going to come and save us and fix everything and that we're victims to some perpetrating force. You know, we're kind of moving out of that state of consciousness, correct, into mm -hmm. a sovereign state of consciousness. What messages are coming through for you around that? I think what's coming through to me is that the, and I've interviewed a few people. I've actually paused the podcast for a while, just as you know, because I've been, this work so, so huge. But just before I, just before I finished it, I interviewed um, a couple of quantum physicists, Armit Goswami, Professor Armit Goswami and, uh, and Irvin Laszlo. And both of them said that the, what's happening this time is the change is not coming from our so-called leaders. It's coming from the periphery. And it's coming from people that have been working in silos all by themselves. Um, and, and then everything's coming together in different forms. But everyone needs a kind of different version of it for them. So for some people, um, they might need, they might still want to um, to use religion as their prop. Other people might want to to follow a football team or something like that and, and get into collectivism that way. Um, but everyone will find a different vehicle for it. But what's interesting, though, is that it's humans that we're making the transition with spirits uh, uh help but spirit are really excited about what we're going to come up with because it hasn't been done before you know one of the, we're one of the um the leading planets in the whole cosmos um and I, what i've been told is that one of the um, outcomes of this is the actual planet herself becomes self-aware so at the moment we have a, a conscious planet and uh, lady gaia is the energy of the of, of mother earth but we actually end up with a, an actual conscious planet not a planet with consciousness on it but an actual conscious planet oh this is so cool because yeah. okay sometimes i'm called to do things that i don't understand but uh -huh. what you just shared with me helps me understand what i've been doing for the last three years since i wrote that book healing the mother mm -hmm. wounds i have been maintaining this altar for mother for the mother goddess yeah, and yeah. i've been lighting the candles on the altar of the mother goddess for like three years now and just put it you can probably get any chills i've been putting like all the goddesses like that i can find that you know like white buffalo calf woman and mother mary and you know like just all this goddess energy i've just got kind of poured it all into this altar and i've just been like you know just <laughs> honoring you know the divine mother goddess like for the last three years <laughs> and wonderful. it's just a devotion now because I don't, you know, it's not like there's at first I thought, well, I'm doing this because I've got a class that she, that I was told to teach called, you know, the mother goddess, but it's like, no, it's beyond that. It's something else. It's like these silos you're talking about that really resonates for me, that silo energy. And now I'm really feeling the energy mounting Tom kind of like, we are now pulling ourselves together and connecting across these silos. Like you have this silo that you've created where all of your teachings are coming through you and it's coming through clear because you need that channel to be clear. Yes. And then mm -hmm. as you share your insights with the other dots, we start to connect. We find out that many of us are getting very similar messages, but different language or different constructs. Right. Yeah. And actually a really important thing is that, um, you know, there's, there's male magic and there's female magic and obviously females can, can conjure up male magic and vice versa. Uh, but I, I feel there's a synthesis coming between the two. And what's very interesting is for, for many, many years is that my following on insight time and my following elsewhere has been very female dominated. The women are the most awoken on the planet right now. 
which yeah, is well, just the... exactly exciting to see. And it's not about women taking over from that male-dominated yeah. planet. It's about us coming to a new synthesis where we get the best of both worlds. And I, I always love that metaphor of one plus one equal or equaling three, you know, so we get to a new place. Yes, absolutely. And and we are healing, you know, and I also follow the work of Richard Rudd with the Gene Keys. And there is a the shadow of conflict, which happens to be my pearl of peace. That is everything to do with healing the divide, the perceived divide between the masculine and the feminine, because really it's it's duality but the duality has intention and purpose in the contrast right it's like there's it's like the first separation before masculine and feminine is like the observer and the observed yes which is quantum physics it's like there if there is no observed then there like what's the observer how do you know the observer if there's nothing to observe you mm -hmm. know so like we <laughs> i'm sure things are coming through for you about multiplicity and unity so talk about like what, how do what's our new relationship with our diversity um and our unity consciousness have you getting messages around that well i think the the first thing to bear in mind is that uh, you know we we you know that mod the, the model that we've all come from source and we'll all return to source uh and and it all starts with unity the numerology is coming very strong for me recently i'm starting to research the tree of life again it's got the numbers one to ten in it um, but I'm I, like I normally do. I'm expanding it, so it's going to have twelve by the time I finish with it. Uh, but also taking all of that cabalistic language, which was quite uh, difficult to get your head around, and and contemporizing it all, as I did with the tarot many years ago. I wrote two books back ten, twelve years ago on the major arcana and the minor arcana. Uh, and instead of it being all about tarot symbology, it's that the, the major arcana uh, is about modes of consciousness, and the minor arcana describes us as nine-dimensional beings having this three-dimensional experience. And then if you look at the models that the tarot exp uh, expands into, which are now, namely the tree of life and the cube of space, I've done contemporary versions of them as well. So I've used tarot as my seed and my, my door opener, if you know what I mean. And then I've kind of almost thrown a lot of the old language away because it is quite obfuscating and contemporized it and then give it given it given it context to say well actually the tree of life is a, a tool of soul advancement and the cube of space is a, a tool of soul integration so we don't have this separation between us in our physical body and our ego and our soul or spirit that soul actually incarnates into us yes absolutely and, and has Embodiment. the human experience has the human experience with us and that's really exciting and i guess that that's that that same state of, of of human that you were referring to as well this this illuminated self-illuminated human yes exactly and i guess the point i was saying about that um when i was making that point is that the second wave is largely um souls that have inhabited on other planets and have a lot of wisdom from like a lot of other planets and star systems and things like that like star seeds that came in to embody as human be human have the experience and then sort of like do a lot of reprogramming from the inside out like you're talking about like get in mm -hmm. experience it translate it make it accessible and then those beings that have been on the planet as humans maybe for a really long time now so maybe don't remember other planetary experiences, um, they also are capable of taking us on now. So there's no separation. Like there's really just, it's just a kind of a different context for somebody who's a soul, a star seed and they know it. It's a very different context, that's all, um, than somebody who's just sort of been on the planet as a life force on this planet, you know? So we have this opportunity to see that there's like just a multiplicity of experiences. They all lead us on our individual journey, the thumbprint journey, right, into the same basic understanding, but through different pathways, so to speak. Yeah, and actually, I've, I've really been enjoying recently writing about that stuff in because <laughs> it's so out there. And one of the one of the um, memes that I've been working with in, in my fictional work is that because we're in this century, we're going to learn how to be planetary caretakers each single person on this planet, each set of the seven, eight billion people on the planet right now is learning how to be a planetary caretaker so they can go off and be a planetary caretaker on seven or eight billion planets around the cosmos. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And the other information I got, and this is so fun, is that um, as part of the second wave, part of the, the experiment is that we incarnate into bodies that look very similar, like mm -hmm. we're human. 
we have different skin color, different hair color, things like that. But we're, we're in basically the same bodies this time. And so if you come from well around the universe and then you're coming and gathering here and having basically the same body, it's kind of a way of, of bringing unity as well because you're not in like completely strange different bodies. You're actually in a very similar experience yeah. and you get to experience that. It's to create our ability to create peace with each other so that around the galaxy we have more peace, right? So we can interact with each other better yeah for sure because our, our, our is it, we think of our egos being separate but actually all, they're all one <laughs> but there's, it's just an illusion of uh of, of separateness which is why we all get these really weird coincidences and you feel like <laughs> i just must bring tom up and we'll uh, email tom and we'll get him on the show and and it's all about the then you get into lovely divine timing as well because we get in complete sync with each other and sometimes i love it now because often something pops in a day or two ago and only realize afterwards how synchronistic it was and and how how perfect it was it pops in there on that right now well you know there's something i want to bring up that's coming into my attention now tom about what you said about um embodiment and about the the gaia consciousness awakening herself is mm. that um as a female on the planet what i really resonate with with mother earth waking up is that she's really allowed herself to be abused on behalf of her children, right? She's just allowed just tremendous abuse. And like many women, you know, on the uh, throughout the ages have allowed this abuse. And now it's kind of like we are being um, woken up to realize that there's another way of being in relationship with the feminine and maybe even like the mother archetype energy which like you said, can feel maybe kind of disempowering to the masculine sometimes because the awesome power of the feminine on this planet especially is like, it's potent, right? So like, mm -hmm. how can you maintain your own sense of self with that potency everywhere? Because it's everywhere. Um, and as it comes back to life and it, and it she comes into recognition of herself, um, there's also a way in which it's so important to be um, honoring of all of the diversity of life on the planet, no matter what form it takes and no matter what primary energetic it's operating from, whether that's masculine or feminine or a balance, like whatever that looks like, that we, I feel like we're being called up to really be in honor of the planet and the mother consciousness and also of ourselves as her children, so to speak, on this planet. What are your feelings, thoughts, messages around that? Well, in the last hundred years, you know, we didn't, we, we hadn't left the planet a hundred years ago and now we've got eyes and sensors in over the planet. So we now we can see what's going on on the planet in all wavelengths, you know, and look at the magnetic field of the planet and what have you. And we, we're starting to realize is that, uh, and I'm, you know, my background is, is science and physics and this sort of stuff. So I love all of that stuff about cosmology. We're starting to realize that in you know, earthquakes on the planet are actually caused by, um, uh, coronal mass ejections that hit the magnetosphere, vibrate the magnetosphere, and they destabilize the tectonic plates. So we're, 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 we are susceptible to space weather as well as we are to weather weather, right? Uh, we're starting to realize this thing about climate change or whatever. We just, we've just recently lost James Lovelock, as you probably know. He wrote uh, Gaia Theory. He was an amazing guy, lived to 103, I believe. Amazing guy, kept his, his wits about him right until the end. And, you know, his, his view was that, um the, the the planet is a is a conscious living thing and a, and a biosystem is a conscious living thing and if anything uh would be threatening the biosystem then it will do something to get rid of it so in a way maybe you can see covid i'm not really a conspiracy theorist but you can see covid as a bit of a warning shot um uh, for the planet and again what i did in in i wrote some short stories in the middle of lockdown called cell waves insertions based on uh the numbers one to twelve and no, number eleven i wrote about covid 38 starting in 2039 how it finally gets eradicated from the planet uh by looking at it from a holistic point of view and it's a lovely fairy story and it involves goblins and elves and trolls and, and that sort Light of stuff. things but, exactly all that sort of stuff and i wanted to i wanted to to to, to, ex, to to explore also the fact we got this underworld and an overworld and we're somewhere in the middle um but uh, you know what i think is is that we are we're only now getting to to grips with it and we can actually see what we're going with. and our, our our male smarts largely although there's some fantastic female rocket scientists out there and physicists nowadays and, and what have you but largely the um 
the, the, the sort of male dominated materialistic science has given this uh, this ability to see what's going on, which is great. So we can have this thing called proof. Now, as a metaphysicist, you don't need the proof because you use your own intuition to know whether it's true or, or not. Um, and, I, and I always say that t uh, today's today's metaphysics is tomorrow's physics. They'll get there in the end. You know, they, they, won't, they won't find dark energy and dark matter because it's right under our nose and it's us and our consciousness and all that kind of stuff. But we'll get there in the end. And and there are some awakened physicists like um, I said, Irving Laszlo and, and Armin Goswami that do understand how everything is wired up. Um, so I think that we're just in, in, in a golden age, really. And there's loads of terrible things happening at the moment. We've got the war in Ukraine. Uh, we're still coming out of COVID. There's all sorts of financial instability, loads of corruption around the world. We've got a, a strange government in the UK at the moment that needs to wake up. But but they that stuff dominates the news. And the stuff that's not hitting the news is the stuff that's going on in these lovely little silos all is coming together. And that's that energy and that change is much stronger than any of the darkness you might see right now. And in fact, uh, I think I wrote a blog a few months ago called The End of Endarkenment. <laughs> so to get in light, to get in light, I love making up pseudo new words uh, to get to to get to enlightenment. All we've got to do is to stop the endarkenment. <laughs> well, OK, so on that topic, I want to bring up that this whole new science of quantum physics, yes, is yeah. really interesting, isn't it? Because it's really showing that we are in a paradigm where the observer is observing something. And the way the observer is observing something influences the observed. Yes. And so we have a direct impact and be able to um, influence the observed outcome, the observed experience, the what he was reality, so to speak. So Masuro Emoto did great work on this, right, with the with the water um, experiments and proving that when we put positive intention and we look through things through a positive lens and positive like emotions like love and compassion and peace and all of these things, that what happens is that we um, the water becomes vibrationally beautiful. Like it, it when you freeze the molecules of that water, they produce gorgeous snowflakes mm -hmm. but when you infuse water the very same water with feelings like hatred or anger or resentment or judgment that those things tend to warp that water and and alchemize it towards a place of like an imbalanced expression or um, even like discolored and and malformed and so we are 70 percent water <laughs> and the planet is like a lot of water yes so mm -hmm. i mean i don't know the exact numbers because i'm not a scientist but i just when i think about these things what always brings me um awareness on the path of being a medicine keeper in the indigenous traditions is what's the lens with which i'm looking at the thing because the lens with which i'm looking at the thing if i'm in a healing session is influencing the outcome for the person's body 70 percent water that is receiving these messages and these visions and this like prediction so to speak mm -hmm. and is that's going to influence their life and that and if we do that for the planet that's going to influence the planet so i think that like we have this opportunity now to realize the the lessons of the science is revealing to us some of the actual ways in which we're going to be able to co-envision and co-create a new reality maybe not so much always from the hard like shovels and and pickaxes level but from this larger influence base of influencing the chemistry of the planet based on our own um, ability to access our hearts and open up love and guidance from higher realms. What's your sense on all that? Because that was just a big channel of messages that like came through. Well, I'm so, so glad you got the word heart into the end of it because that's the key. So, uh, so I, I, I've been blessed with over the last um, I don't know 15, 20 years. Uh, I keep getting little snippets of stuff, either messages through. Or I read something in a book and said that that's really important. You know? And I read this thing uh, in a book called Cosmic Memory by Rudolf Steiner some time ago. And in it, uh, he talks about the root races. Um, and this is all um, theosophy and this sort of stuff. But base and and uh, before him, Madame Blavatsky wrote Isis Remembered, and that had a similar story in it. And I, I went at the time. I went now. That sounds more realistic to me than the catechism version of the earth I got when I was a Roman Catholic, where the earth was created on, on 4004 BC and on the 23rd of 
September 923 or something like that. Uh, and and, and it, it sounds a bit more realistic than the, the, the materialist scientist version where we got the Big Bang and then everything kind of crystallized and life sort of spurred off. So I read, read Cosmic Memory, I went, brilliant. That that sounds a bit a model. Again, he uses slightly arcane language. So in my fictional work I've done recently, I've taken elements of that and I've, I've strung it across the, the book. But one, th one thing I have done to very good effect is something he talked about when he said that when we first got the word, when the word was made flesh, what happened is we learned how to control our fifth chakra point from our sixth chakra. So you can now hear some of the thoughts I'm having and then have thoughts of your own. Now, we don't give that a second thought now, do we? That when we speak, we're actually we're embodying uh, the, the airways with our thoughts. We're transmitting the thoughts. And obviously, with materialistic science, we now do this over Zoom and Skype and all this sort of telephony so we can do this uh, worldwide. So we've got a lovely framework, technical framework for us to, to spread the word and spread this lovely light. But in the book, he said, the next phase of human evolution is when we learn to take conscious control of our heart chakra. Oh, yes. Now, and then then I did some, I did do two lots of esoteric uh, training, one with the, one which was a male magic thing which, with the builders of the Adetum in California, which is about tarot and Kabbalah. I also studied with a female magic school in, in Germany called the Cryon School, which is angelic magic. And I've kind of, I've been personally, I've become a, a synthesis of those two magics, if you know what I mean. And then from the, the angelic school, they only go and activate my heart chakra, didn't they? Part of the late. The, then I learned how to do it on others. And I've got a lovely free, I do, most of my stuff's out there for free because I want everyone to get this. I've got this thing called the heart, heart, uh, heart ray activation. And with it, what you do is you activate your heart ray. Loads of things, loads of applications for it as well. One, you can uh, you can find your soulmate. Uh, two, you can find a career, and also you can you can heal people anywhere, past, present, and future with with the heart ray. Now, the heart ray is different from the sort of the pulse you might get if we, we just got hearts together. It works amazingly strongly and really well. And then what's interesting is I then extrapolate. Well, if we're, if we're doing now this conscious control of the heart chakra, which I think I've achieved, and I've taught loads of other people to achieve. What's next is taking conscious control of the other senses, the, uh, the 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 solar plexus, the sacral, and the root. And I've had certain. I keep getting little samples of what happens when you take control of them. First is sacral center, that's where you manifest from. That's your need center. So if we if we switch needs to requirements, which is a nice little reframe. So I'm working on some meditations at the moment for for master manifestation. Now one of the reasons this stuff has been buried is in the wrong hands you get all the wrong people trying to manifest the wrong things like the uh, Lamborghinis and the $2 million thingy, all that kind of secret stuff. It's not about that level of manifestation. That's why some of the secrets have been kept safe. Solar plexus, I think, is to do with um, bilocation and root is to do with um, levitation. And I have had one full body levitation once. Back, wow. which, I've not been able, which I've not been able to someone was in the room at the time so it wasn't me just imagining it and, and I said I feel really weird she said I'm not surprised you've just done a full body levitation and on my podcast I've also interviewed two other people who had done it as well and then going back in time to past lives I was um I was named Thomas I was born on the 7th of March which is Thomas Aquinas's feast day and Thomas Aquinas used to levitate as well in front of the altar. So this is the thing that I think is coming to us. So, there's, but but like all these things, I say I, I write about this in in my in my fictional work, is that no point learning to levitate until you learn how to unlevitate. Otherwise, you end up at thirty nine thousand feet and a bit <laughs> cold and suffocating. But I think this is exciting. This we're learning all these new. That this it, it's it's kind of magic, but it's only magic if you don't know how the trick is is done. In the same way, you know, if you go back to humanoids before they got the word, they'd be listening to us making noises in the same way we listen to a language that we don't understand, but not understanding that this communication is going on and not understanding this mechanism, which is now unconscious, which is third in you know, a sixth, sixth chakra, uh, fifth chakra. So imagine then we get to fourth, um, so, sorry, sixth chakra, fifth chakra, then fourth chakra and so on. Imagine we get conscious control of all the chakra centers, then we are truly magical beings. But in a hundred years time, when we've mastered all this, it won't feel like magic anymore because everyone will be doing it. Well, and the, and the new kids coming in, they don't even need to speak. They just psychically connect. They get it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's just the craziest thing um, for somebody that was in the old model. Like, I need to speak. I'm a yeah, speaker. And, and, and I need to speak. We've got great fiction. We've got fiction like Stranger yeah. Things, all this sort of stuff. So all, all, all the sort of, um, all the stuff that the, that the young kids are consuming 
um and like and harry potter was a good example of that as well it's like bringing magic back into the world in the way we we got rid of magic because of materialistic science poo-pooed it and magic faded away and the fairies faded away and the goblins and the elves all faded away then we had tolkien writing about this stuff and uh es nesbitt and what have you then we bring it back into the world again now it's all over our screens and then you know you've got uh metaphysicians like metaphysicians like you and i teaching how to no, no, obviously you've been working with them um, with with the shamans and what have you so this this is still no this is still knowledge which is on the planet it just isn't shared at the moment and it's, it's in very little small silos but i think our job is to get it out there and uh, and have fun with it and explore yeah and our job is to get it out there and it's like um there's a lot of fear around it right because of the literalist doctrines that were sort of controlling and suppressing this kind of information um so that people wouldn't be able to be self-empowered so to speak you know have a direct connection to the source their own source and their own um there's a huge deconditioning that's taking place on the planet where we are being invited to step back into our sovereignty for maybe the first time ever right as for humanity to step into sovereignty to step both feet on the ground to like you said claim our chakras to claim ourselves as sovereign and to realize that we have the power of the word and we have the power of creation right here right now and um you know and then there's we're still kind of working with this old system i call the patriarchal or the piscean age system where it's like very fear-based, very controlling, very literalist interpretations of things, where the magic is all about magical realism. It's all about being able to see the metaphor of things in sort of like the soft gaze rather than the hard gaze. You know, I mean, these are just languages and ways that I've used to differentiate, but they just, they hint the door, right? It's just about pointing the way to the door. It's not like um, a manual it's an experience getting back to what you were talking about at the beginning but we have to be willing to have the experience and we can't be afraid of like getting punished you know for having the experience yeah. and that's where that courage comes in yeah well you mentioned about the duality before and duality is an intrinsically safe place to be so you don't you don't have uh, matter uh, meeting with antimatter and exploding it's all kept in balance in the same way you've got love and and fear is an opposite of of, of love and they kind of can get and I, I always say that there's no such thing as negative energy it's just positive energy not pointing quite in the right direction but we're, we're moving to a new phase called the triality um in the duality you can have the not thought which might be the fear that something might not happen which tends to sit in the lower gut in the solar and these uh, so so you might have this desire that um you get the two million dollar mansion on the beach uh, uh and, and the lamborghini but you might have the fear that you might not be able to manifest them and they tend to uh, emanate from our chakra centers either from our our third eye uh and our mainly our sacral chakra and they cancel out that's why we don't quite get there all the time we're always one step away from nearly getting somewhere and um, and that's a safe thing because you know if you put the wrong thoughts out there when you learn to truly manifest anything you like if you put the wrong thoughts out there they're not so good thoughts then that will manifest uh, very quickly indeed but we'll move into a new phase called the triality where just the thought comes out and i've got a lovely meditation on that as well it's called the two mind transmutation and you take the desire from the head and you take the fear that's sitting down in the lower mind centers you bring them up to the heart center the heart's really important this move to heart consciousness is not just a metaphor it's actually real and i can over over zoom i can actually um get people to feel that heart energy it works incredibly well and non-locally so you take the the fear and the 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 that that it might not manifest in the design of bring them down to the heart center and then you beam out from the heart center the result of when it manifests not the manifesting thing itself so let's say when i got that house what well, i might just might just make me happy but what am i going to do there that helps transform uh, me and my family uh, friends and the planet and then you that thought goes out into the world and then if you need that house that house manifests often what happens a much better house that you didn't even think about manifests or a much better thing i'm using the house as a metaphor here so often we don't have to know the way to it but we just have to ha hold the the intent from that desire not the desire itself but beam it out using the heart rate work the treat yes and i love that you brought in that the intentions are for 
the highest good, right? It's like, how can this manifestation of this house for me and my family benefit a great deal of people, benefit the planet, have some useful impact? And that's the thing because it's almost like the consciousness engine is is like coordinating the desires of, you know, billions and billions of aspects of self, like billions of people, billions of plants, billions of animals, billions of cells. I mean, everything is being coordinated to, to arrive at, um, at a, at a option, at a a conclusion, a result that benefits everybody and everything. Yeah. And it's, and it's okay to be personal in that desire as well and that intention. So it's okay if it just makes you happy, don't feel selfish. I don't think that, that that's selfish because um, this, this spreads. And even if somebody doesn't read your book or doesn't listen to them, I want to meditate meditations, it's like the hundred monkey thing. It spreads just by osmosis and people will get it. <laughs> oh, what have you. Uh, and, Cause it's and in the so, space. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause we put it in the space. Yeah. It's really about influence. I, I just always get that message from my guide white which i call white eagle i get that message that it's all about influence what we're Mm -hmm. doing here is influencing and um many of us maybe have been on other planets where um, the manifestation was easier (laughs) like Mm -hmm. it just happened instantly and this is a different thing it's a different experience it's a unity consciousness experience of manifestation and yes in some way tom what you said is correct because it's like because if your heart's really desiring something and you receive it, well, the benefit to the universe or to the planet is that you're going to emanate that that joy, you know, it, from your being. And that's going to benefit everybody you know, because you're emanating joy, right? You're emanating happiness and success or whatever it is that makes you feel good. Yeah. And the, and there's lots of people that have done, uh, you know, that they're not doing studying metaphysics that are doing that joy thing you know we've got some great uh, artists all around the world that are just emanating that that good stuff and they far outnumber anybody that's not emanating joy you know there's more joy and more light on the planet than there is dark yeah absolutely yeah. gosh beautiful so as you as everyone listening as you can see there's so many little trails that we could go down in our conversation just a million little trails is there any last little thing you want to share that you're being called to share before we conclude this episode for now because i'm sure we'll have more conversations but what's uh, anything coming through for you for the group right now yeah i'm a i'm 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 a great advocate of ditching to-do lists <laughs> get rid of get if you get you then the way you do it is this is you you get all your to-do lists out there might be there might be personal ones and business ones and career ones and this sort of stuff and you get a blank sheet of paper and you on the top of it you put it call it your to love list and you take the take transcribe the things on your to-do list into your to-do list into your love to your love list in the order you'd love to do them most <sighs> and you just write them all down right if there's something that doesn't migrate you either do two things to it you either outsource it to someone else to find someone that can do it there's some great sites like five squids and that sort of stuff where you can find someone to do things for five dollars and that kind of stuff or you transmute it so you can get to love it and then you put it on your to love list so you change the, your, your attitude to it and then you you run your to love list and you start it from the top down doing the things you love the most first and this is very akin to, um, I was born Roman Catholic and you you were taught to serve other people first, but it's a bit like being on an air, aircraft where it depressurizes. You've got to get your mask on first and then you can help other people, which is why your manifestations are okay to have first so you can help other people. You know, if you're living in abundance, then you've got more time on your hands to create more and more stuff to help other people live in abundance, which is why the vast majority of my stuff is available for free on Insight Timer. I give it out there freely. I've had I don't know, 5 million downloads and and not $5 million coming back the other way. That doesn't matter, but I've got 5 million karma points. And that from other sources gives me everything I need. And it just, that takes a bit of trust. <sighs> that from in. other sources. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to come back to you wherever it comes back to you from and let the universe manage that reciprocity system. We don't need to manage it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not interested. I don't need it back from that person. The random act of kindness is done because you you don't necessarily need it back from that person, but it'll come back in another way from someone else. 
Yeah, so that's actually another thing we're clearing at this time. And this has actually come up in my direct personal experience recently is that, um, and my dad taught me this lesson growing up, such a powerful lesson from amazing dad, is that when you give, you give without strings. You just mm -hmm. give. If your heart is called to give, you're being asked to give period by the mechanism that connects us all by the source you're being asked to give in that moment you feel the urge you feel the inspiration mm -hmm. so just give and then let it go don't expect anything in return don't think you're owed something because then that kind of like that creates that funky energy you know like when you think you're owed something in return for that thing it creates funkiness you know and that's like not flow so well that, again that, that emanates <laughs> from a, a lower mind center yeah so we, we, we're gonna because our heads become so strong it's overruled all these lower mind centers that are speaking a very uh, in a different language. They don't speak in words; they speak in feelings and and intuitions and a yes and a no. And then when you get into meditation, you can tune into these lower mind centers and take them under conscious control. And that's when you become this master manifester, where you don't have to worry about where it's coming. And and the fact you're not worrying about it, our language gives it away. If I'm worried about it, uh, about giving all this stuff away for nothing, um, then I will actually unmanifest the goodness of the stuff you've already put out there you, exactly you can't it, exactly yeah. and then it, it kind of taints relationships and it like future potentials that could be formed now start to shrivel you know so yeah. it's like it, it ends that pathway and then a new pathway has to open up with somebody that's more open right so we're going to find relationships i think being a major teaching point of all of these principles as we move forward you know um our relationships are going to show us these dynamics so that we can actually learn them. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, gorgeous insights. Haha. <laughs> as usual, as uh, you were, you were like, I think you were voted or rated like the number one or something like that on Inside Timer. I can't remember what the statistic was, but it was pretty high up. You're you're a big wig on Inside Timer. So guys, check out Tom Evans over on Inside Timer, and also, um, you know, he's got a list. So get on the list so that you don't miss out when the uh, uh, Magnum Opus comes out because that is going to be amazing to read the Book of Overstanding. Uh, I can't wait to read yeah. it myself. Well, I'm, re I'm serializing it at the moment, and the first step is absolutely free. It's on my homepage, uh, and it's a it's a, a lovely course on the, the, the flavors of our thought, how not all our thoughts are necessarily what we think of as our own. <gasps> Perfect. <laughs> Loving. I'll put that link in the show notes, everybody, so definitely check that out. And I want to say, if you loved this episode, please share it out. Share it with somebody that might be interested Give it a like, give it a comment, give it a subscribe. Let us know what you thought. It's okay to email us and let us know what you think or comments on the YouTube, wherever you find it. We will respond. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you thought because you're included in this conversation. And we want you to be part of this bigger conversation because the more we all converse about these kinds of things using our power of the word, the more these things expand. And what we focus on expands and we want to focus and expand love. So thank you so much for focusing and expanding love with us today. And I'm going to give kisses on the way out, Tom. Would you like to join me to give kisses? Yes, indeed. Okay. That. Here come kisses, everybody, from our hearts. We love you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lots of love and a massive expanded heart ray beaming your way as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of heart rays. And we'll see you next week on Soul Nature Show. Bye for now, everybody. You're a star. If you found even one gold nugget in this episode of Soul Nectar Show, will you do us a favor? Will you subscribe, like, and share this episode? Maybe even write a comment and let us know what you thought about it. We really, really want to engage with you at a much deeper level. Let's be part of community together. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. To dive in deeper to nourishing conversation, visit soulnectar.show. Soul Nectar Show. Awaken away the Nectar Show. Take a sip from the drip of nectar from the source of who you are.